Hey, what is up, everybody? I am your host, Rob Younce, and thank you for tuning back into the Canecast Show. If today is your first episode, you are in for a treat. If you've been with us before, we really appreciate you coming back. But either way, today's guest is a total dude. He's a Canes alum, a walk-on in college, and now a big leaguer. But before we get into that, I'd like to ask a favor of you. Help us grow this show. How can you do that? Well, there's several ways. First and foremost, give us a like. Smash that like button. Whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on your favorite podcast host, give us a like. Two, drop us a comment to let us know what you like or you don't like about the show. Three, help us grow the community by subscribing. This lets others know that this show is legit. You can show us some love with a review, or you can share the episode. Send this to your friends and enemies who are missing baseball right now. Today's guest is Kansas City Royals first baseman, Ryan McBroom. He is a Canes alum who has earned his place in every step of his baseball journey. From his walk-on spot at West Virginia, to earning a full ride after his sophomore year, to climbing the minor league ladder straight to the show. You will hear McBoom, as he is affectionately known, talk about what has gotten him to this point. It's a lot of hard work, his ability to adjust and focus on his goals. How many guys do you know who seek out at bats against 100 mile arms during the off season? If you know a player who is wanting to be recruited to play in college, send him this episode. <laughs> well, you don't want to hear from me, so, Here's Ryan. Hey, what's up, everybody? Rob Younts here with another edition of Kane Cash Show with co-host Jeff Petty. Jeff, how's it going, buddy? Going good, Rob. How about yourself? Not too bad, man. How's things up in Fredericksburg? I'm ready for this to be over, man. Right? Ready to get rolling, ready to get back on the field, man. I know we're all itching, and that's kind of uh, kind of the, the great part about uh, the Kane Cast is we are able to get guys on and Speaking of which, we have an awesome guest today. Dude is former Kane, uh, West Virginia Mountaineer, and a Kansas City Royal, Ryan McBroom. How the heck are you, buddy? Rob, what's going on, brother? Thanks for having me, first off. Uh, I'm doing great, doing great. Just trying to get through these times, just like everybody else. Right, it's crazy, man. I know, I, I, uh, we were talking off camera that you're back back home near, uh, near Fredericksburg. How's that going, bud? Yeah, man, I was out in Arizona, obviously, for spring training. Um, stayed out there. Spring training got delayed, got canceled, you could say. Um, got delayed, stayed out for an extra three or four weeks, decided, you know what, I should probably come home. Um, I got a place to work out. Uh, my family's here if I want to see them. Um, it's been great, though, man. Weather hasn't been the best, but it, it's been great to see everybody, for sure. That's awesome. Good, 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 good. So tell us a little bit about your high school career. Tell us about, you know, kind of you, where you grew up and where you played and, and take us up right before you get to college. No doubt, no doubt. So I'm from Fredericksburg, Virginia, obviously the home of Jeff Petty as well. Um, went to Cortland High School. We actually went to the same high school. I graduated in 2010. Um, played football, played baseball. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I played with the Canes in the summers, not really the fall because I had football going on. Anyways, I was never really recruited heavily out of high school. I mean, I obviously had the talent. Jeff saw that my, my sophomore year. He was like, right. wow, uh, he could play for the Canes. You know what I mean? And this was when the Canes was kind of an up-and-coming organization. It wasn't really established like it is now. Um, so I, I, I heard from Jeff, and I was like, man, maybe I do have a, a pretty, you know, decent ability. I had always had good hand eye. So my sophomore year, I was playing varsity at Cortland High School. Um, and I was able to just hit, man. I didn't really have the most athletic build or anything like that. Nothing crazy going on. I could, I just had really good hand eye coordination. Not ridiculous numbers, but I just consistently went out and, and made adjustments uh, year to year, really. And that's kind of what got me to um, the next level. I was able to make that minor adjustment, which got me to college. So my senior year, I signed with West Virginia University, actually as a, a preferred walk-on. They liked me pitching and they liked me hitting also. Um, so I showed up in the fall of that of that season and um, mainly a pitcher, mainly a pitcher. And I was just, I tore up the whole fall. The whole fall I was, I was raking, man. I was, I was leading the team. Um, guys like, man, this, this kid really can hit. Yeah, he can pitch a little bit, but 
but he could really hit. And um, it was kind of from there on out, just I was swinging it, man. I was just able, like I said before, I was I was just able to make those minor adjustments that other guys yeah. I feel like might have been afraid to make. Um, but I think that's really what got me through high school, through college, and, you know, now to the major league level. Um, I just really wasn't afraid of failure, and I wasn't afraid to make that little adjustment that has to be made in this game of baseball because it's so mental. It's ridiculous. Right. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Jeff, what do you remember about Ryan as a player? I mean, yeah, obviously you guys were from the same area. Um, you know, he was on, on the early Canes teams. You know, comment on him about a player. Tell us tell us what you saw, what you noticed. Yeah, um, you know, there's a buzz around him because we did go to the same high school. And, uh, you know, if a kid's coming through that, that program, you know, I'm going to hear about it. So I snuck over there and watched him play. I mean, he kind of alluded to it a little bit without coming out and saying it. I mean, the body back then, Ryan, wasn't like – I mean, you were big and strong, but I wouldn't say that you were, like, in shape. Would you agree? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, so it was it was a first base body, uh, right-handed swing, left-hand throwing, um, but had some, like you said, hand-eye ability. And he came and played with us. And, and as he's alluded to, you know, he, he wasn't one of the better players on that team uh, with Pender and all those guys. Uh, he was kind of late to the party with being recruited. Uh, you said you didn't play foot, football and baseball at the same time, but your senior year, you weren't being recruited, and you did both. Like, mm -hmm. you play base, you play football on Friday night and then drive to us on the weekends trying to get seen. Yeah. Because you weren't getting recruited. Uh, Man, that was brutal. Yeah, <laughs> those drives after it. those Friday night games were brutal. Yeah, I, I felt bad for you, man. I remember we were in Raleigh one weekend playing at the USA Complex. And I always felt like a maybe a closer a closer connection with you, maybe because we did go to the same high school. No doubt. And we 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 grew, we, we grew up in the same town, so mm -hmm. we had that in common, and not a lot of you know we had that in common. So that was always a thing we had. Um, and I really wanted to help you, you know, at that time, your senior year. I remember you rolling into Raleigh, North Carolina. We'd have like a 9 a.m. game. Man, you must have not slept because Friday night football game, I mean, you, and, you, and you, didn't, you didn't spend the night in Raleigh, so you woke up, had to be 4 in the morning or, or earlier to get there. And you would roll up and you'd play, and you were so committed to – trying to get seen or whatever. The West Virginia thing, I don't remember how that came about, but I had nothing to do with that. Yeah, um, no, no, no. Because I think the fall finished and you still didn't have anything, right? Right. Is that right? I mean, I, I had some little schools. No, yeah, yeah. You wanted to go Big D1. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to play somewhere where I could get to the next level. And right. now, looking back, man, this is to all the kids that are going through that recruiting process. Um, it really, it does not matter where you play, you know what I mean, at all. Uh, and I know a lot of kids do get overseen and they get discouraged, but deep down, like what's inside here is really what matters at the end of the day. It doesn't matter if you go to LSU, Ole Miss, or you go to Germanic Community College. If you can play, you can play. And as you develop, um, guys are going to see you. And that's just, at the end of the day, that's all that really matters. Um, so, yeah, a lot, so all the guys that aren't getting seen, kind of like the guys that were in my boat, um, stay up on it, stay working, stay grinding. Yeah, and I, see that? That's no doubt. Know, yeah, just to answer your – finish your question, I've seen Ryan a lot. Uh, we go to the same gym. Well, we don't go to gyms anymore, do we, Ryan? But um, we see each other. I mean, we've just been – Nope. I mean, I consider Ryan a, a close friend at this point, and – to speaking to him, he just, he never took no for an answer. He always continued to work and he's continuing to do that now, obviously. But yeah, he could have easily been discouraged and hung it up, but he didn't do that. And just seeing what he's done with his body and stuff, I mean, that's just good old fashioned hard work. And uh, I uh, have a lot of respect for it. No doubt. Yeah. That's great, example. Yeah. great example, really. great example, man. Such a good example. Yeah, absolutely. It. Absolutely. So, you know, the, the neat thing is, is, you know, coming in, um, you know, playing and, and trusting yourself, 
and then getting onto campus, you know, in, in West Virginia, what did you see? I mean, obviously you had some early success, but what did you see when you were around everybody else on the team? I mean, you know, it, it seems to me that, you know, the program has really taken off and, and you were a big part of that. Um, you know, what did you see amongst all the guys that you were there? Because, you know, again, you came in as, as not one of the top recruited guys. You came in as a preferred walk on and, and you made that decision. You had the confidence in yourself. But what did you see amongst everybody else? What were, what were some of the observations there of, of the guys you played with? Yeah, I kind of have an I had an odd career just a little bit because I had a, a coaching change after my sophomore year. So I came in with the with the the original coach and we had a great team man. we had a very offensive team, um, not the greatest arms, but we had some decent arms um, and we competed in the Big East. And I came in my freshman year. Um, I mean, just to be honest, I felt like I was I should be a starter, you know after that fall season and I was banging a little bit, um, I was like, wow, I, this first base position could be mine, you know, when spring comes around. So the opening series came my freshman season or my, yeah, my freshman year. Uh, we went down to Florida for the, the Big East Big Ten tournament. I ended up not playing, um, just like the rest of the freshmen pretty much. Um, and then that second, the second weekend rolled around and I ended up getting the starting position at first. And um, the rest was history pretty much. But I was able to solidify myself that fall uh, freshman year and, you know, making a good impression of who I was, you know, both on and off the field. You know? um, and I think that really boosted my career. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, you, you had a great career there at, at West Virginia. You know, you, you, I, that's where I learned of the nickname McBoom. I mean, that's uh, I, I, every, everything they write about you there is, is McBoom. And I love it, man. Yeah. That's great. Um, yeah, you know, things a hit now. <laughs> so how did you become successful there? I mean, I know you talked about making adjustments and things like that, but tell us about, you know, some of the things you were doing that was different than the other guys. Some of the things, you know, late night swings, you know, always at the park, you know, I know you're that type of guy. What kind of things were you doing that was, you know, to try to separate yourself from everybody else? Yeah, no doubt. I knew I had to work 10 times the amount everybody else did kind of like what we were talking about before. I just knew I had to if I wanted to do what I really wanted to do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but I had a buddy actually from Fredericksburg that went to West Virginia and played baseball, John Jones, left-handed pitcher. And he kind of brought me in, man. It was just, show me the ropes, you know, show me how to get to 6 a.m. workouts, uh, how to get to class on time, what I need to do to basically prioritize, prioritize everything that's going on in my life because college can be a whirlwind and how to get everything straight and organized, which I think that's critical for, for guys going into college. They need to find that upperclassman that can kind of take them under the wing and show them a little bit. And I was very grateful for him uh, to, for doing that for me. Um, but other than that, just working, man. Weight room, not missing weight rooms. Uh, right. Sometimes going to the gym twice a day just because I know I had to outwork people uh, to maintain that position. Just like everybody else, really, or most, yeah. you know, in most yeah. cases. So, well, people that are successful, right? I mean, right, right. Not, you know, not everybody, not everybody is willing or, or, you know, not not everybody has that drive to do that. So let let's talk about that for a minute. Tell us a little bit about, you know, your upbringing. Tell us a little bit about growing up in Fredericksburg, because obviously it it it, it appears that that's where all of this come from. So tell us a little bit about that, and you know. Uh, how, how life in Fredericksburg prepared you for all of this? No doubt. Great place to grow up. I was just a, a huge family. No matter where I went or what I did, it was family oriented. And that's kind of what I brought with me the whole way, if that makes sense. That's kind of been my why. That's kind of been my push to succeed and prove a lot of people um, that I can do it. You know, I think about my mom. I think about my grandfather, just which is also very critical critical for guys to to find that passion and burn inside for why you want to do something um, and that's really been that's really been it just that push from my family growing up um, to follow my dreams and, and not really take no for an answer that's really just been my kind that's, of my that's, niche and gets that's me really going. cool that's really cool because you know a lot of times um, you know guys don't understand you know, why they're driven, it, it sounds like you are, and, and you know what your why is, and that's hugely important. You know, oh, whether yeah. it's, 
you know, whether it's now in the game or whether you get, you know, when you, you have to hang them up and you get into a business career, you know, understanding that why is, is really what gets you up every morning. And, and the fact that it's tied into the family and Jeff, you know, you can attest to this. I mean, that's, that's really what a lot of our guys have said, um, which again, it, it, you know, ties back to, you know, you Jeff setting up the Canes. I mean, you know, that's, that's really a lot of the stuff we talk about now we try to impart into the kids is, is understanding that why, and it typically ties into their family. Um, Jeff, so talk a little bit about that. What do you, you know, what do you know about, about Ryan's upbringing? What do you know? I mean, how does that fit into, I guess, to how he is now? No, I mean, I just know how supportive his parents were, uh, such nice people and they were always there. Um, you know, always every step of the way, every time I saw him playing in a high school game or with us, you know, the parents were hugely involved, you know, and I guess you can, you know, that, that's a story where, you know, the parents, I guess, are driving your, your, your desires, you know, or oh, yeah. they're, they're a big part of it. So that's, that's, that's awesome, man. And you've obviously uh, made them proud and everybody from this area I don't know if we've ever had anybody from Fredericksburg, Virginia play in the big leagues. I know we've had some guys taken high, Chris Stowe taken in the first round, Matt Hollerin was a first rounder. Um, there was a kid from Cortland that got drafted late, Mark Proctor, as before my time. Um, not a lot of guys from this area. I think John Main from Stafford made it to the big leagues. Uh, he played with the Mets yep. some, went to UNC Charlotte, but uh, – and yeah, it's been it's been awesome to see and the support from this area. You know, we just want to see you keep it going. No doubt, man. It's been exciting. We just got to get going again. <laughs> Good Lord, man, it's killing me. I know, I know, it's right? Awful. It's awful. So, killing me. So, Jeff, you followed his career. You followed his career in co in college. You know, you, you, I know we bump in. You know, we're we're together on weekends. We talk. Hey, man, did you see so and so did this, or you know, how he had a great season. At what point did you know he was going to be, you know, he was going to get drafted and there was a little bit of heat on him there? Well, again, I mean, I'm, I'm off in the distance um, on a lot of these guys. Um, we just communicate and stuff, you know, almost as friends since he's left the high school ranks and just check-ins, like, how are you doing, man, things like that. But I followed his career much like you probably did, just looking at box scores. Um, social media, things like that. And just when someone, like Ryan said it, when you're playing really well, people find out, doesn't really matter where you're at. And the, the numbers and stuff that he was putting up, you know, it's like a lot of people taking notice um, to that. And then, you know, I again, I speak to, I, I see him in the off season. I see him in the gym. I see the transformations, you know, with the body. And, and like he said, you know, there'll be some times where he'll work out two times a day, because I, I don't work out two times a day, Rob. I'm lucky if I work out one time a day. But I did notice there was a stretch there where I'm like, it didn't matter what time of the day I went, Ryan was at Gold's Gym. So I'm like, bro, <laughs> what's going on here, man? Like, I was yeah, always seeing you in there. Yeah, I'm like, well, I, I guess I'm on my second workout. Well, well, that's cool, man. I'm in here for my 30-minute workout, you know, that I'm going to rush through so I can get home. But um, – yeah, I mean, just the work ethic is 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 there, man. It's yeah, just totally off the charts for sure. Totally off the charts. So, Ryan, tell us a little bit about it. You know, you're at you're at uh, West Virginia. Things are going great. You know, when did you start noticing that there were more eyeballs on you? And and I guess you know, seeing. I know you always believe because I mean, I wasn't even a very good player, but I thought I was going to go play pro ball. Um, but at what point did you know, like, hey, this is this is legit. Like, this is going to happen. Yeah, no doubt. Um, well, after my sophomore season, like I mentioned before, a new coach, Randy Maisie, came in. Um, and at that point, I still wasn't on scholarship. He came in my junior year. I was on a full ride. Um, so right then, I knew that he had some um, investment into me and kind of knew my ability. Uh, and junior year, the you know, the, the letter started rolling in for some from some from, from some major league teams, just the, you know, the, the questionnaires, nothing special. Um, and I started putting together a pretty solid junior year. And I was like, man, I could really do something with this. Just continue to work and, and not get caught up in the whole college partying. And uh, West Virginia is going to, 
you know, let's go out all the time. As easy as it is to to do, to fall into that, um, I kind of had to sit back a little bit and just and take in what kind of was going on with me and my career and what I wanted to do after college. So I took it pretty serious. You know, starting my junior season, I started getting some interest from scouts and I was like, wow, let's do this, man. Let's keep working. Yeah, that's awesome. It's, it, and it takes a lot of maturity. And, you know, guys get to college campuses and all of a sudden mom and dad aren't looking over their shoulder and they can go crazy and do all these things. It took a lot of maturity for you to say, hey, I got something bigger that I want to do. You know, and it also, you know, transforming your body and all the workouts you're doing, you start to see a return on that investment. You know, you're starting to see, hey, I'm, I'm making the moves that I always knew I could. Um, you know, to, to, to be that guy to say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to stay home tonight, and, you know, make sure I get my sleep or I eat and, and be ready for my 6 a.m. workouts. It takes a lot of discipline, man. Um, you know, to see that return on the investment, I would imagine, you know, you, you go from especially fighting for a roster spot to, you know, now I'm in the lineup and, and playing regularly. Now I got a coaching change, which usually that's everybody get on board so he can bring his guys in. And to exactly. coach Maisie's to coach Maisie's credit, he realized, you know, hey, I got a pretty good talent here. Um, you know, probably get reports that you're doing all the right things off the field. You know, and, and a lot of guys struggle with um, doing the right things on the field and doing the right things off the field. Sometimes they don't quite mesh up. Um, you know, and it, and you get rewarded with a scholarship, and that's great. Um, no so after so after that, you, see, you know, you're getting all these these questionnaires and things like that. You put together a great junior season. You know, tell us about the – tell us around the draft. Tell us how that went. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, were you out on the lake fishing? Uh, we've heard stories of guys <laughs> being out on the lake fishing, so they don't have to sit around. <laughs> what did you do that day? Tell us a little yeah. bit. Yeah, that's funny. That day was actually my sister's graduation from high school. So I was in the, in the Cortland gym um, just waiting for that phone call, man. I finally got it. Uh, it was so exciting. But um, I yeah. was actually drafted after my junior year also by the Kansas City Royals, which is pretty funny. Um, decided to go back and get my degree and um, ended up getting drafted by Toronto my senior season and, and taken off from there. But to bounce back just a little bit, my senior year, I was pretty blessed because we had a really good team and a lot of guys that were driven kind of the same way I am. We, had, we actually ended up having seven drafted. Um, and three make the big leagues, and one being a big league all-star last year. Our Saturday night pitcher was a big league all-star last year. Um, so I had guys surrounded, um, surrounding me pretty much that had the same um, determination and drive as I did, which made it, you know, that much easier for me to continue to keep going. That's like the perfect That's storm when that happens. Oh, yeah, man, that was just like I got to outwork him, but he's getting drafted in the third round, and he's about to be in the big leagues, like, it was just a whole bunch of guys working together, just trying to outcompete each other. And it was, it was awesome. That's cool. It's, that is yeah. really cool. That's probably why there were seven guys drafted off that team. I mean, oh, oh yeah, we had, a, we had a team. It's incredible. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, all right. So, you know, you, you finish up, you get your degree, you, you go to, you go to pro ball. Tell us how it is walking in the locker room the first time. And, and, you know, is it bringing back feelings of, Hey, I'm this, I'm this walk on again. And uh, what, what kind of feelings did you have there? Yeah, that was, that's a good question because pro ball, I kind of opened up a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I walk into the locker room and there's, there's Spanish music, you know, uh, Latino music playing everywhere. Guys just having fun and um, not much English being thrown around. And I'm like, wow, this is literally a different world for me. Um, but I like it. You know what I mean? So everybody was sure. playing loose, smooth. It's just a totally different game. And um, a lot of times I think guys can kind of get locked up. Um, how do I say this? I guess mentally a little bit. And they really don't let their true talents come out. I guess they might be afraid of failure. They might uh, be playing too tight and trying to impress people. Um, but once I got to pro ball, man, I kind of just loosened up and really came in to found out who I needed to be and was able to do that pretty quickly. And um, a lot of credit goes to just um, those guys just playing loose and it's just a different world. It's, it's kind of tough to explain, but once you see it, you, you can understand. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's good. That's a, that's a very good picture you painted there because, um, you know, it is a different world. Um, and mm -hmm. it, it's, it's well, neat to see it the other that, way. If you yeah. do it the other way where you're like, Oh, we're on, 
field six here in the complex and there's scouts watching, I better play well, you're screwed. Oh, man. I could touch on that, too, because I've been traded yeah, please twice. Do. Yeah, I've been traded twice. So going into a new organization, um, your your natural instinct is to want to impress. Um, and I, I fought myself as hard as I possibly could to stop doing that and just be me. Um, so that's that's what that's I can tell kids also, man. Just just be you. Just, just play, it's very right? cliche. It's very cliche, but just it's so true, man, especially in this game. Stop trying to impress people and just play your game. You know? Well, and, and that's what we tell kids all the time is that you can't control what happens outside the defense. You just can't. No matter how oh, bad yeah. you – no matter how hard you try, you're not going to take – you know, you're not going to go – you could go four for four with three jacks and the, the, somebody might not think you're attractive. Somebody might not like your game. Somebody might pick apart your swing or your footwork at first or, or whatever the case may be, your body, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, Whereas somebody else is going to say, "Man, that's a dude," and, and you know the beauty. And I know a lot of um, a lot of guys feel awful when they get traded. Like you know, again, you have a choice to make. You can either be, "Hey, somebody really values me," or you know, the co the team that traded me, eh, they didn't really like me. Um, you know, and, it, it, and it's interesting to hear because I know your your perspective is, "All right, cool, here we go again. Let's go. Let's let's go and let's go and." Uh, knock somebody's socks off. Let's go in and just go and hit and do what I do. Um, how did that help you? How did that mentality, you know, when you, you know, when you get traded after the initial shocks over, I guess, because nobody ever expects to get traded, right? You expect to right. stay with that team and man, they love me and I love them and everything's great. How, how did, how did, after you got over that shock, how did it, how did it give you a little bit of an advantage to go and say, all right, here we go again. Let's roll. Yeah. Um, so July of 2017, I got traded to the Yankees and when I was in double A. We were actually playing against them at the time. So my GM from the Blue Jays called me and said, we traded you to the Yankees. You're going to Trenton double A. So I basically just grabbed all my equipment and walked across to the other side, which was the weirdest thing, man. But <laughs> I had a lot of buddies on the, on the other team that kind of allowed me to mesh in really well. Um, so it was a, it, that was an easy transition. I think the harder one was actually this season when I got traded. Um, from the Yankees to Kansas City because it was my first time seeing any of these guys and my first day was actually in the big league so I really didn't know how to act um, I wanted to impress people but I also wanted to play my game it was just a huge whirlwind of emotion um, but once I found out how the guys were and how much like they were very team oriented which really helped me to transition well um, so it turned out to be a, a, an easier um, move than I thought it was going to be. You know, when your first days in the big leagues with the team, you kind of are just right. and then you overwhelmed. Get, you know what I mean? So, but it was, it was fun. And then you get like 80 summit bats and hit 290 something. And yeah, right. That's <laughs> same, just, hey, uh, same game, man. It's the same game. It's crazy. <laughs> Is it? Were you nervous the first day? Or like you step out there on the big league <laughs> <I nervous>? field? And... <laughs> man, I didn't even know what to think. It was just, it was a, it was a dream come true. It was, yeah. That call, that call was the best day of my life, man. Wow. That's a lot of hard unbelievable, work to get Unbelievable. There, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was, I can't even really talk about that. That's crazy. And, 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 yeah. Matt, and yeah, so who'd you call first? Who, when, after you got the call, who'd you call first? Oh, my pops, for sure. I had to tell my dad, and then I called my mom right away. Um, then my uncle, and they all started booking flights to Kansas City, and it was awesome. fun, man. Yeah, it was, anybody, it was truly. Anybody cry? Oh yeah, <laughs> not Good. me actually. Yep. I was I was <laughs> I was so in shock. I didn't have the chance to cry. <laughs> I was like, "Let's go, let's do this." Awesome. That's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. and you know it's it's great because it gives you a, a gives you a point to reflect back to, right? It gives you a point oh, to yeah. say, "Wow, man, all of this hard work, all this you know, getting up at four a.m. after getting the snot beat out of me in football and going to you know." going to North Carolina to meet Jeff and getting APs and, and work and all the extra workouts, all of the late night swings, all of the, the decisions you made up to this point all have paid off, right? I mean, it's, oh, it's yeah. a point where you just kind of look back and, you know, and, and you celebrate a little bit. What did you do? Did you do anything special? I mean, I, I know it was a whirlwind, so it was probably get to the park and get running, but did you do anything like, man, like, what'd you do for yourself? Anything big? When I was finished? Yeah. 
That's funny too, man. I'm a lunatic, so I went and played more baseball in the Dominican that off season. <laughs> <laughs> right, you did. I remember Dude, that. Dude, I, right. I, I played winter ball three years in a row. I couldn't get enough of it. Uh, right. I love that, the, the way they approached the game. And I was like, dude, I got to go back and play, man. It's just so much fun. Mm -hmm. um, so my crazy, yeah, I took my, yeah, I just went back and played more baseball, like like a lunatic, I said. So. And before that, you went to Mexico to play, right? Were you in Mexico? Yeah, Where I played two, years in, two okay. years in Mexico. I was in Culiacan. You had good. You had a good. Uh, you had a couple of. Well, you had a good fall there. I think it was. You, you yeah, yeah. Years. It's the winter. Tell, tell yeah, us yeah, about that. Sure. Tell, tell us about that. Tell us about the the winter ball in uh, in in other countries, in other Latin countries. I mean, you tell didn't us. have to do that, right? Like you no. just did oh, it to no. try to get better, right? I mean, that yeah, that was yeah. that was on me. That was that was on me wanting to go play, man. I, I encourage everybody at the professional ranks to go play winter ball. At least experience it a little bit. Because I think it truly improves your game. It improves your mental and it improves your your approach towards the game of baseball because it's completely different than anything you've probably ever seen. Well, tell us more. Tell us, tell us what's yeah. so different about it. Fill everybody in. It's because they, they live and breathe and eat and sleep baseball. And there's nothing else. Um, and they just know all the ins and outs. And, like, your coaches are, like, Hall of Famers and, and there's – players on your team that played 10 years in the show and there's guys that are going to be Hall of Famers playing on your team and it's like and then you have your young number one prospects and all of baseball playing with you and it's like man there's just so much talent around you and then the fans are insane there um like I said they just eat sleep and breathe baseball and that that's it man it's it's really a it's a great place, man. It's a blessing. What are some of the, I was able what are some of the things? What are some of the things you picked up down there, um, like that that we can see in your game now? Yeah, I think just how to play loose. How to when I'm in the box now, I kind of just I try and flow and just almost be asleep in the box, which sounds weird, but it, it's just really helped me um, just to relax and play the game freely. Kind of like I mentioned before, stop right. being so mechanical and locked up in, in in your head and just let go and and play the game right very cool very For cool sure. i know we you know we hear a lot about you know the dominican uh baseball if you had to compare dominican and mexican you know winter leagues which tell me a little bit about both you know what what guys can expect in either one of those leagues yeah so if you go down and play in mexico i played in culicon um that stadium is the number one of, in all of latin american countries it's a big league stadium on steroids it's like it's pretty much playing like playing in the big leagues they fill out every night um, wow. um, the difference though would probably be the arms. When you go to the Dominican, you're seeing 100 um, every single night. There's not a guy that throws like below 95, especially coming out of the bullpen, man. So you got to, oh. I'm telling you, <laughs> and sometimes wow. they don't know where it's going. So you got to be ready to hit wow. from, from pitch one, man. And once you start seeing pitches and taking strikes, it's over. Right. Wow. Holy so cow. All those reps, I mean, yeah. That has to be a test. That has to be a big aid in getting to the big leagues. Oh, my goodness. I mean, while well, yeah. you could have been in the wintertime kind of just not playing ball and lifting weights or whatever and not getting those ABs, there's an old Michael Jordan quote. I think it's something like, um, the best remedy for insecurity is more practice. Mm -hmm. So it's like – you have so many at bats in so many advanced situations. Even like most of the time, like guys in the winter, they're not playing baseball, but you're going out of the country to find it. Like you are searching for it. Yes. So those insecurities or whatever it may be, like you say you're asleep in the box. Well, you might be asleep in the box because you have so much, you know, repetition and, live situations under your belt like you just flushed out you can't be insecure 100 you, you, you can't be scared because you you chased it you know exactly. and there's so many kids nowadays like they don't even want to like play a full summer schedule with us right. Right. Yeah. too much baseball yeah it's like, it's like bro <laughs> like you, <laughs> you have no idea yeah <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah that's cool yeah you Jeff, you put no out doubt. a tweet. Yeah, you just put out a tweet, Jeff, talking about guys about this summer. You know, it, you're going to see who really loves the game. And, you know, Ryan, man, you can tell how much you love the game. 
you can tell how hard you work at it because it and it how it all ties into your why. I mean, you're you're going all over the world trying to get a beats, man. You're 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 pers- <laughs> you are very singularly, you know, focused on getting to your goal. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, <laughs> and now as soon as you you know you get there, you get you know, like I said, eighty eight beats. You hit two ninety three. And you have, you have a great start and getting ready for spring training. So you're running, you're running, you're running, and now we hit stop. What are you doing yeah. now, man? What are you doing now? How you how you uh, A, stay insane, B, trying to somewhat be prepared. I mean, I know they're going to give you time when, the, when they flip the switch, but what are you doing now? What's, what's taking up your time of your day now? Yeah, man, it's crazy because I'm not used to being home when the weather's starting to turn nice. Um, so like I mentioned, I was, I'm working out, obviously. I have to work out every day or else I can't continue on with my day. That, that's just how I'm wired. It's weird. Um, but I go to the lake. Um, I go fishing. I've been playing a ton of golf, obviously keeping my distance from people. Um, reading a lot of, reading a ton, actually. Um, just trying to stay, you know, on top of it. So when the time does come that we get called back, it's pretty much like I didn't miss a beat. You know what I mean? Right. Right. So I'm just trying to stay. Doing taking a lot of swings and stuff like that, like you were you were saying off camera at your your buddy's place. Yeah, I do. I probably I don't go. I don't take a ton of swings. I think it's more at this point. It's it's mentality for me. But I like to tune up and keep my hand eye, you know, sharp. Are you so? Are you hitting live? Are you hitting you know regular BP T work? What do you what what kind of routine do you have when you do go hit? I mean, you 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 fired up the machine. What what are you doing? All I do is machine. I usually do fastball machine up and out over, like in the upper quadrant, kind of towards my chest area. And I do a lot of top hand work. Um, being left handed, I'm left hand dominant. So I've always had to work extra on my right hand and my top hand. And now I'm just peppering that thing, man. Just keeping that hand eye nice and sharp for when the time does come. That's good, man. That's really good. That's good. So how's, how's fishing been going, man? You've been catching anything? Dude, I. Ch- <laughs> I'm not. I'm the furthest thing from a good fisherman. It's it's hilarious. <laughs> I, I more so go out for the for a couple beers and just being with my cousins. You know what I mean? Socialization so, aspect. Exactly. Right. Exactly. That's why I go out. But um, it's fun, man. You know, I don't I don't check my phone all the time, and it kind of gets me away from yeah. all the crap that is going on. You know what I mean? So it's it's been awesome. What about the golf so, game? Yeah. Oh man, that is coming in hot. I'm getting good, Jeff. Really? I'm I'm getting good. <laughs> yes. Yep. Were you always good or did you have to work? No, out? no, heck no. I've been terrible. I'm I'm still I'm not so great. bad. And and, yeah. and I, I live here in Fawn Lake and there's a course here, so like I'm reminded of it every day. So I bought me oh, a yeah. little, I bought me a little net and a little piece of turf and a, some rubber tees and I've been trying to work on it a little bit. So <laughs> This, this, I love this, that. The swing is just so atrocious, man. <laughs> I want to see that. I'll break it. I'll break it down for you. It's bad. It's bad. <laughs> All but, right. So when you say when you say you're coming in hot, how how good are you? What kind of? Are we got a handicap here? What's going okay. on? Okay. No, not like that. Not like that. But I'm I'm doing really well. So when I first started, probably, uh, dude, believe it or not, I started a couple months ago. Um, okay. Because a lot of people were asking me to play all the time. And I'm like, man, I don't play golf. I don't even own clubs. That's me too. Yeah. So you know what I mean? So I was like, man, I got to get into this. So I, I started playing. And, and now I legit have probably – I've gone almost every single day since I've been home. Nice. Very nice. So, I mean, it's just, it's just natural that I'm getting better. Where are you playing? Yeah, I've been playing at Lee Hill. I've been playing Gauntlet up in Stafford. Um, so, I mean, Augustine. Are you, so you, are you playing like a full 18 every day? Club, yeah. What I mean, do you sometimes, shoot? Like, a, like what, what you got? What do you yeah, shoot? yeah. I mean, I, I'll bounce anywhere between like mid 80s, mid 90s. That's good. Um, That's yeah. very good. Yeah. yeah. Good for yeah. you. Just don't play it's with just the pitchers I'm playing on every your day. team. Don't right. play with the pitchers on your team. They'll try to take your money. Mackenzie yeah, Gore told us that. Yeah, they'll hustle the heck out of you. Yeah, I already know that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, so when you first started shooting or started hitting it a little bit, were you slicing everything to the right? I was, and I made an adjustment like, I was like, I need to start hitting the ball to the left side, pretty much, because I was so sick of slicing the ball. So I made that adjustment, and it's finally, finally starting to straighten out for me. Thank God. That's good. Man. You might be able to help me then, because every dang ball I hit is 
fuck that Dude, one. Hit, hit, all you, all you got to think is hit a roll over to third. <laughs> I hear you. I, I think that way too. Like, I, turn that thing I, over. It's not man. working for me, dude. Well, I didn't mean to turn over. this into a golf conversation. Oh, no, no, this is great. This is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> but Cody, Cody's really, really good. So we were talking about um, maybe hitting the range on Thursday. We'll see. You need to get out there. Get get your swing coach out here, Jeff. Yeah, Ryan, yeah. Ryan, Ryan will work you through it, bud. It's one an hour. So. <laughs> So, so Ryan, one of the things you said that, that kind of piqued my interest is you're talking about doing some reading and stuff like that. Are you reading anything to, to help you, you know, with your game now, or is it just kind of recreational reading? What's, what you got, man? What, what, do you, what do you got teed up? Most books that I read are self-help books, meaning whether that's with diet, nutrition, um, just how to go about your average day and get the most out of the day. Um, I was actually given a book by Sandy Alomar when I was with the Blue Jays, because he knew, he saw that my biggest issue was trying to impress people and not really being who I, who I was and getting the most out of my mentality. So he gave me this book um, basically, basically about having confidence and how to obtain and reach your highest potential using that confidence. And he gave me that book. And I swear that was that was what helped me get to the to the highest level. Now I made notes, I highlighted every page. Um, that was a blessing in my career. What's that book? It's uh, the mentality. It's how to achieve total self confidence. It's called total self confidence. It's by Doctor. I can't remember his name. I read it two years ago. I still have it. Total self confidence. Yep. It's very I'm, good. I'm gonna yeah. write that down. Oh yeah. yeah, because there's not, you know, kids just, I mean, they struggle with stuff like that, you know, and it's not something that. 38 and I struggle with it. Yeah, so do I. I mean, I, I've got, I was just on a call here for work earlier and I'm just like, oh man, I don't know if they want to talk to me. It, it, it happens. And our kids, you know, all of our Kane's kids, you know, they need to understand reading's cool, man. I mean, you're, you're, you're a big leaguer and you're, you're, staying with your and I, I want people to hear this because you are just laser like focused on your goals and laser like focus on getting to the big staying the bigs and having a long career you know having those 80 at bats and, and hitting 293 that's that's huge man too many too many words too many anyway it's it's huge and, and to yeah, continue to stay there and to stay that focused when you know, it's easy to say, oh, man, I'm here. I'm a big leader. You're, you're just laser-like focused, and you're, doing, you're looking for that extra 1% to get you to that next step. And that's, to me, it's very evident just from following your career from afar that all those things are – you're a summation of your choices. You're a summation of what you do every day. And you're just constantly just leveling up each and every time. And I want to make sure everybody hears that because it's so important. You had a great support system. You were focused. Um, you did whatever it took to get there and, and very focused and made great choices all the way through. And I have no doubts that you're going to continue to make those great choices because you're doing things now during downtime, like reading freaking books to help you fill in spots where you need help. And that's really, really important. It's super impressive. I mean, to watch mm -hmm. it from afar, it's super, super impressive to watch you become a professional and become a top tier professional and to continue to push and, you know, going to find at bats in Mexico and, and the Dominican and doing all the things you've done, man. I, I don't, I'm sure your, your support system has told you this, but it's really impressive, man. It, it really is. Yeah. I appreciate really it, Rob. Cool. I, I mean, appreciate it, it. I can't, I can't think of a better, um, a better represent uh, representation of, of what you know the canes are and what we want for all of our kids mm -hmm. you know i mean it's it's easy it's well it's not easy but it's a lot easier when you've got the 100 mile an hour arm when you're that guy that has that attached to your shoulder but if you're not the guy you know you were a, a, a not a great body guy you went transform that you know you yep. talked about self-confidence you went transform that um you're constantly doing things to make yourself better man just i, I Guys like you are, are the ones everybody should be rooting for. Yeah, definitely. Well, you're not, a lot of guys. Go ahead, Jeff. No, you're not. Uh, you're not the norm. So, I mean, how old are you now? 
20. I just turned 28. So ago. you're 28. So if 28 year old Ryan McBroom could tap 17 year old Ryan McBroom on the shoulder and tell him what to do, you know what you'd say to him? Don't change a thing. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah but, sure. but if 38 year old Jeff Petty tapped 17 year old Jeff Petty on the shoulder, let me tell you something, buddy. We would be in a room for hours. Yeah. And I would tell 17-year-old Jeff Petty to do a lot of things different. But but you you can't say that. You're 28, and you wouldn't tell 17-year-old Mc, Brian McBroom to do anything different. Why would you? So someone yeah, instilled so. that in you, and you you a lot of self-control. I mean, evidently West Virginia University, I'd never been, but I hear it's a big party school. But you didn't really uh, take to that. Um, yeah. You know, you just – it is good, man. I mean, but you are – if it was so easy to do – like, I'm in coaching, man. Yeah. Like, I wish I could get kids, 17-year-olds, to think like you did. So extra workouts and to, you know, to make not, great choices, uh, because, I mean, all the time. But I'm the example <laughs> of – I would come from the example of, hey – I did this and this didn't work. I thought this way, that didn't work. I've coached hundreds of kids that thought the right way. I am lucky. I've been around a lot of you guys that did it right. And you try to instill that in a kid and it's not easy to do, man. It's, yeah. it's, you're, not the, you're not the norm. Um, your mentality is, is not is not the norm, man. But it's it's huh, served special. you well. It's special. It's gonna it serve really you well is. forever. Yeah, hopefully so. Hopefully yeah. so. No doubt. It's awesome. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yes, guys like you, man. You make this. You, you make what we do easy um, on the coaching side of things. You know, you, you coach Maisie. You're easy there. You know, just give you the keys to the field. Let you work out every now and then. You know, you, you really did some some great things, and we expect a lot out of you. You know, I, I don't. I think after today, there's going to be a lot of kids in Kane's world that are going to really going to be following you and going to be watching. Uh, you're going to be number. Are you still number nine this year? Yeah, I'll be number nine. All right. Yeah, there's still going to be watching number jerseys. I need one of them jerseys in my man cave. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> no you're, you're I'll no put pressure. a nice little note on there for you too when you get it. <laughs> oh man, I, I can't wait. That thing's going. That thing's getting hung up right away. Heck yeah, let's well, go, baby. Just, hey, oh. just, just so you know, we talk about you all the time, man. We we talk about you, and it's always great things. You know, we always reference you. Um, you know, we 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 hold you in very very high regard in in Kingsley, and so um, you know, you, you do come from Jeff Petty's backyard, and. And you're gonna have to come talk to our kids this fall if you're not in Absolutely. the World Series. Or that, that is true. I plan on being there though. So. Yeah, so it or might not work out this year. Not yeah. this year. <laughs> yeah, I'll be I'll be somewhere. I'm sure. No, I definitely will. I'm always up for for talking because I feel like I've been through what a lot of kids go through. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, no, I, I, mean, I did I want you to. I talk, I think yeah. I talked to you about that already. Yeah, yeah. I need but, to. But the season to going later this year, hopefully. Hopefully you're not talking to us this year. Maybe it's the following year. What are you hearing about anything with that? With, with this season? season? Yeah. I don't know, man. We had a Zoom call yesterday. Uh, Matheny was telling us that they're going to be aggressive with it, um, as aggressive as they can be, I guess. Um, but as of now, I mean, the latest, there's nothing, you know, solidified. It's all just hearsay and, and throwing ideas around. Um but he did mention that we might be in our home city. So we might actually be in Kansas City with no fans. Wow. That's what he said really? might happen. Yep. Um, but yeah, there's but, just so many tweets going around, and I'm talking to agents and scouts. and Yeah, there's uh, everything being tossed around, man. It's like it's, – It's crazy. I'm sure you're yeah. going nuts because it yeah, directly yeah. affects you. I mean, we we want to see it happen. We want to see baseball get going again and people playing again. You know, because at, at the highest levels, if y'all are going to start playing, um, then that that's going to bode well for us to maybe start getting going here at the amateur level. We we need yeah. that. We I know the world needs it. That's, yeah, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So Ryan, man, it has been awesome. I've learned a ton. You know about we see the outside, right? We we see the success, but we don't usually get 
an open look at what's inside of you. And I think that, you know, a lot of us today have really learned a ton about you, the type of person that you are. And, you know, if, if, if anybody's paid attention to this, they're going to be super impressed with the type of guy you are, you know, your laser focus, your dedication, you know, the hard work, you know, that just speaks volumes of the person that you are. Um, you know, Jeff's reinforced that. Everybody we've talked to about you has reinforced that, man. And we are just so pumped that you were, you know, able to spend some time with us today. Um, you know, before you, you go, eight, though, I'm, yeah, I'm going to find. So we're going to get a little Cortland High School thing going here. Uh oh, Let's go, baby. Here we go. I thought I saw there used to be a Cortland High School Virginia baseball website. And I think you had how many records do you have there at the school? I don't know. I have no idea. I Almost. really have no idea. Probably none. No, I thought you had like the most home runs or I don't think I, so, man. I can't find it. Whatever. But hey, hey yeah, Cortland Cougar. And 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 that that actually means something to me and you. Heck yeah. Yeah. Rick Holcomb. Heck yeah. You didn't yeah. get to play for Rick, did you? No, nah, I never I actually did my freshman year. Yeah, my freshman year. Did you? How awesome yep. was he? Oh, great guy. Gosh, he great was guy. awesome. He he knew yeah. how to uh motivate. Exactly. He was great. He was great. He had this he had this thing about him where like I don't know what was for you, but I just wanted to play well for him. Yeah. And that's when you got a coach like that, when you got a guy that you want to play behind and really play for and win for, it makes it that much easier. Yeah, he was he was awesome. It seems like the, the new coach has kind of carried on his name, because to me, I mean, Holcomb, I feel like he built that program. I mean, the field's named after him, won the two state championships. And yeah, no uh, doubt. it seems like Akers, you played for Tim, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Me and Akers are really close. Yeah, he seems like he's doing a great job. And Oh, great guy, great coach. He's doing yeah, great. I, I, he seems like it. And uh, maybe speak to him a little bit. I mean, because it's, it's, from the outside looking in, I take a lot of pride in, in Coach Holcomb and the program that he built, and it seems like, a lot of Tim Akers tweets and stuff that he puts out, he references Rick Holcomb a lot. Um, and this might just tie into the people in Fredericksburg. Uh, you know, we're kind of transitioning and talking about people in Fredericksburg a little bit right now. Uh, yeah, that's good. It's not every day that you have two Fredericksburg, Virginia guys on this thing. No, not at all. Yeah, speak to Akers a little bit and the job he's done uh, carrying that program on. And, 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 and you playing for him. Oh yeah, no, he was amazing, man. We still we talk pretty much at least once a week. We're we're talking. Awesome. Um, he came to my game in Miami, the series in Miami this year. Awesome. Um, he supports me. Great guy to play for. Young guy. Um, great family guy. Uh, he's basically like family. My family is just like, how's Tim doing, and and everything. Right. He keeps in touch with them. Just all around great guy. Great coach to play for as well. And um, he expects a lot from his players. You know, he he puts them to work and expects them to put the work in and, and compete, you know, when the lights are on. So, great, awesome guy. Yeah, I see that because he's always putting out his tweets about the workouts and stuff like that. And that, that's cool because I feel like he's kind of carried Coach Holcomb's program on in that Definitely. way with the Definitely, work ethic which is important. and the blue, the blue collar, you know, like. Yeah. That, that's cool. That's really cool. Yeah, so, so important. No doubt. And that might have helped you too. Oh, heck yeah. You know? Heck yeah. All of it. Everything that I ever experienced helped me. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah, it's, it is. It, it's, it's a step along the way, and each one is super important. I'm glad you touched on that, Jeff, and I'm sorry I mentioned that. Oh, no, yeah. I, I mean, just kind of, a side, kind of a sidebar. We went to the same high yeah, school. Yeah, but it's – We played for the same high school coach for one – I had I had Rick yeah. uh, for four years, um, but, you know, Ryan, you know, had him for the one. But, yeah, he's just – had that it's super important, there. right? I mean, it, it really is. Had him to kind of – he instilled a lot in me, you know, yeah. just wanting to work yeah. hard. Wanting to work hard, you know. It's mm -hmm. good stuff. Absolutely. Yep. Dude, Ryan, anything else you want to bring up? Anything you uh, want to share with our listeners, our viewers? Um, anything you can think of, yeah. dude? Yeah, man, I'll touch on two things really quickly. Um, this is for all the, the players out there. Um, if I was a scout or if there's something I'm looking for, um, I think it's very important that I've, I've pretty much experienced this myself, and I think it's propelled my career. Um, there's two things. I think it's adjustability, 
So say a guy gets swings and misses at a fastball 94 up and away, um, that he has the, the awareness and the ability to make an adjustment on starting a little bit earlier and getting on top of that pitch. Guys that can adjust quicker, play longer. Um, and also how guys carry themselves when they're not swinging it well. If you're 0 for 4, how's a guy going to act, you know, no doubt. the next day? Is he going to pout? Is he going to do things like that? I think those are two key things that oftentimes get overlooked by coaches, scouts, um, everybody, really. And I think those are probably the two most important things that I've realized and have gotten me to the highest level in the world. And I take a lot of pride in those things. So just be the same guy, man. 0 for 4, awesome. 4 for 4, be the same guy. The pouting That's thing awesome. is a big deal, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I know. Uh, I it, That's what I want guys to understand, too. So it's a bad look. Same guy. It's a bad yeah. look. First, yeah, it's, it's, a bad look, it's a bad look to everybody watching, but then it's also it's, – it can snowball within yourself. Dude, and, and, you're 0 for 4. That'll turn into – in the big leagues, that'll turn into 0 for 40. If you, if, sure. you, if you don't turn around and – and take that confidence that we learned about in the book I talked about earlier and, and apply that to your life and then keep going, keep moving forward. Forget about that. Be the same guy. Well, you know? you're, you're the small percentage of guys that, that apply, like you, you're saying it, but you actually do apply it to your everyday. Yeah, yeah. Like I couldn't, I couldn't do what you just said. <laughs> I, no, I mean, I think I, you can, Jeff. No, I, I, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. What I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, when I struggled, it's, it's, yeah, when I struggled, I was pissed, and it showed, you know. And I coach a lot of kids that 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 do that, and I'm trying to tell them, man, that's not going to get you where you want to be. Right. It's well, I think to, too, you know, especially especially guys that you know are in the process of being recruited. You know, some coaches want to see you go over four because they want to see how you're going to react. You know, it's another test, and if you're not passing that test, then you're not going to be moving forward with them. You know, they're, unless you're, you know, this uh, crazy talent, but for the most part, they want to see guys, like you said, that are even keel, that they can't tell whether you're four for four or 0 for four. You know, more, more college coaches and scouts are looking at how you react with your parents after the game. You know, they're looking for all of those things. Do you bring those frustrations with you? Are you the guy that, you know, if you're the first baseman and you've been throwing, you know, the game you're three for three, you throw a nice ground balls to your guys, and now you're 0 for three, and you're, you know, firing piss rods at them. You know, it, all of those things matter, and it's it's phenomenal that you brought it up. Um, so it, carries about, weight coming, it carries a lot more weight coming. Yeah, from yeah we can say it till we're blue in the <laughs> yeah. face, but holy cow, dude, you, you yeah. made your living off of that. So that, far, wasn't, right? uh, that wasn't scripted either. He just came out. Oh, no. No, I was trying to shut the episode down being the idiot yeah. that I am. <laughs> so let's talk, about, let's talk about the adjustability real quick because I, I think that's super important and, and to dive a little bit into it. You know, you're talking about that, that 94 mile an hour fastball you might swing through. You know, how do you, how do you change that? How do you, what kind of things do you do and, and to have that awareness, say, oh, I got myself out or, you know, go beat up the, the, uh, the uh, the cooler in the in the in the dugout. I mean, how do you process all that? What is your thought yeah. process on that? Yeah, that's the, actually the one attribute that got me to the big leagues, and I I, I stand behind that one hundred percent. I just wasn't afraid to make an adjustment, and and it's every single pitch. You know what I mean? I wasn't waiting at bats to make that adjustment. I was doing it right then and there. If I got to take out my leg kick, if I got to take out my, uh, if I have to simplify, I was I just wasn't afraid to do that and and make contact and do what I had to do to to beat the guy on the mound. You know what I mean? I was just was not afraid to to do that, and I had the awareness and the and the ability to do it. You know what I mean? So which definitely benefited me in my game, especially in the professional level, because if you can't, you're getting exposed and you're done. Um, right. right. Just wasn't yeah yeah. Just wasn't afraid to to make that difference. You know what I mean? Or do yeah. something a little bit different yeah, yeah. that I had to do to be successful. So I can't tell you exactly what it was. It'd have to be at the time. You know what I mean? But, sure, sure, sure. Um, just change something up if you're getting just beat. Adaptability. Ex dude, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Well, or just do that's whatever it. it takes to be successful. That's yeah, it. And then, uh, Figure it out. Figure it out. The awareness to, to make that change is really big. I mean, yeah. a lot of guys, you know, oh, they're – and I was this guy. I was the worst. I was a two-hole hitter, and I was the worst guy because every every pitcher I faced sucked. Oh, he's he's awful. 
Um, yeah. It wasn't, there wasn't the self-awareness of going, oh, he beat me because of this or that. It was always, ah, oh, he sucked. So my three whole hit yeah. was always like, dude, this, this guy's pretty damn good. I don't know what yeah. you're talking about. You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> um, dude, dude, that's incredible. That's, and, and I think if, you know, the hard work, that, that's a choice. The adjustability, you know, that's humility. That is you saying, you know what, I, I've got to do something different. The awareness, man, that to me is huge. And I think that if you can have that, that ability to look in the mirror and do it in short spurts, as you said, you didn't, you know, you didn't do it from game to game or series to series. It was pitch to pitch within that at bat. Um, oh, yeah. You know, to, to, to do that is really, you know, I mean, you're, you're still a young guy, by the way. But doing it at the lower levels of minor leagues and in college, I mean, that, that takes a lot, man. That, that speaks volumes to how you're raised, you know, the type of person you are to have that awareness, to have that, that ability to look in the mirror and say, you know what, I've, I've got to find a way to make this work. And that's really cool. I, I haven't heard that from a lot of guys as far as adjustability, and, and, and that's, that's really, really interesting. Yep. And, yep. And, that, and that's gotten you a long way. It's going to continue to get you, you know, for even further down the road. No doubt. Um, dude, you're a dude, man. You're, you're awesome. You're the real deal. You Appreciate are, it, um, dude, you're the guy that, that we want our kids to be like, man, you're, you're, you're a great guy. And if, you know, you ever need anything, I know you got Jeff, you guys are friends, but you know, I, I'll definitely be following your career even, even uh, more closely now because awesome, uh, you, you, you are legit, bro. You are, uh, you're, you're a dude. And I, I, I'm going to have to get, go get me a, a, a Casey Royals uh, <laughs> jersey now, man. Let's go, baby. <laughs> Let's go. Hey, you might see a big uptick after this show of guys who find the jersey, bro. You might move into jersey the sales going up. Yeah, right, right. There you right. go. <laughs> well, Ryan, man, thanks so much, man. That's it's fine. been awesome having you. It's been very right, insightful, it. dude. It's thanks, I'm bro. I'm pumped by this, man. This is one this is one of the best episodes we've done, dude. Awesome, awesome. Good to hear. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate you guys having me. Yeah, it was hey. awesome, man. You have a good one. All right, Take care, buddy. see you guys. Thank you See so you much. Guys. Wow, that was awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Big shout out to Ryan for being with us. Give him a follow on social media at r underscore boom. If you enjoyed this episode, like, comment, subscribe, review, and share. Give us a follow on social media at Kane Cash Show. You can reach out to me on all social channels at Rob Younce or email me directly at robyounce at gmail.com. You can find Jeff Petty and follow him on social media channels at WJeffPetty. We welcome your feedback as we look to improve this show every single at bat. Stay safe, wash your hands, and make sure you find the right fit in your college choice.